Okay, so this is going to be the video um, video for how to solve for the um, you know homework two. Um, so I guess we'll we'll call this the key. Although I suppose I could screw up as we go, so it could not end up being the key. Um, all right. So anyway, so we're going to follow the the format um, laid out in the thing. Okay. So. Um, it's kind of hard for me to slice this piece of paper, which is what I wish I could do, so we could do this right next to it, but um, or right under it. But we're going to do it over here because um, I like to have the graph paper. So we'll do given. Um, so I like to do my givens as a picture um, because even though it will take me a little longer, it'll kind of help me visualize what's going on here. So I've got a, um, I've got a straight edge here because I asked that you use a straight edge. And we're going to do four of these little squares. And so we've got a four inch gap here. Okay, so we want to make sure we get all the information from here in there. So one, we've got a four inch gap between two large planar surfaces filled with SAE 30 oil at 100 F. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of say that this is SAE 30 at T equals 100 degrees F. Okay, what force is required to dra drag a very thin plate of four square feet? Okay, so let's draw this little, this little sliver of a plate. Okay, and it's got an area of four square feet. Now, you have to think about which area that is, and that's this kind of the top or the bottom area. So I'm going to say the area of the top is four square feet. Um, okay, what force is required to drag a very thin plate of four square feet between the surfaces at two feet per second. Okay, so we've got um, a force right here, or let's just say this is the two feet per second, okay, because there's a force on it, okay. Um, let's see. If this plate is equally spaced between the two large planar surfaces, okay, so... So basically this space here is four inches. That's four inches. But then up here, because it's equally spaced, this is two inches and this is two inches. Okay, what, what, so we're looking for the force and we're looking for the power. Okay, so there's a force right here that's causing it to move at that speed, okay? Okay, so required, we wanna know F equals what? And the force, uh, uh, the power. So we can't really use P. There's a there's a desire to use P in this case um, for power, but because um, that's like the easiest one. However, we're going to use the rate of work. Um, the reason being in this case because P is going to be used in fluids for pressure. So it's best to get out of that habit. Okay. So here's the solution. So um, I'm going to start with a free body diagram. Okay. And you'll say, well, why is there a free body diagram? That seems like an awful lot of work. It's not really an awful lot of work, okay? Um, too many of my students do not want to draw, ever draw free body diagrams, but they make everything make a whole heck of a lot more sense, especially when you consider there's not really a whole lot of forces going on this. So um, we've got a force going forward, okay? And then what other forces do we have? I guess you could say like in the vertical, it's in the fluid. So there's actually a, you know, in the vertical, there's technically a, a buoyant force, and then there's a... Um, um, you know, a weight, okay? But we're not really, we're not worried about the vertical. But why isn't this thing accelerating in the X direction? Well, the reason it's not accelerating is because there is a force. Um, uh, the fluid is kind of pulling back on it. You could think of it as like a friction, okay? And it's happening on the top and it's happening on the bottom, okay? So that is, um, is the shear stress on the top times the area, okay? And it's going to be the same shear stress on the bottom. But let's just go ahead and call that Shear top and shear bottom times the area. Okay, and so that's kind of how it works. All right, so, so now we're gonna um, solve this. I guess we're looking for force. So we'll start with, uh, we'll sum forces in the x direction equals zero. Okay, so we've got force is positive minus we've got tau t times the area minus tau b times the area on the bottom. Well, I guess this would be area top it's going to be area bottom. Of course, they're the same. And my dog is barking. 
But since they're the same, eh, you know, we'll just go ahead and label them top and bottom. It'll be more general. Um, okay, equals zero. Okay, so basically what this tells us, um, especially uh, if we, you know, if we use the fact that the area of the top and the area of the bottom are the same, so I can say, eh, let's skip a line so we can have a little space, minus tau top times the area minus tau bottom times the area equals zero. And in this case, the tau top and the tau bottom are gonna be the same because, um, you know, just because of symmetry. So I can say that the force minus, so if the, the tau's are the same, then I'm gonna say two times tau times the area equals zero. Okay, so the force is gonna be equal to two times the shear stress times the area. Okay, so that's that's how we're we're solving this. Now the, the big trick here is now how do we get at the shear stress? Okay, so there is an equation for the shear stress which we're going to plug in here, um, and the shear stress looks like this: mu d u d uh, z. Okay, or you know whatever you know we usually call it u um, for velocity. And so I'm going to go come up here and we'll look at this and we're going to think about this. Okay, so mu mu is the viscosity of the fluid. Okay, so mu is going to come out of this right here. This is telling us something about the viscosity of the fluid. Okay, and so that's something we have to look up. Um, and an older key for this one, I found a, a different viscosity than I found this time. I can't really find a reliable viscosity for this problem. Um, so, you know, in your exam, make sure that you know where to find viscosity. So I'll make sure that to, <laughs> to give you one that's uh, easy to find. Um, the one I found for this particular thing is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 um, pounds seconds per foot squared. Okay, so that's the um, absolute viscosity. All right, so then the other part of this equation, so that's the this guy right here, is we've got this du dz. Okay, and the du dz is for the top or the bottom. And so what I want to think about is I want to think about the fact that this plate is moving at 2 feet per second but the walls are not moving at all. So what's happening is, assuming this has had enough time, is basically um, the fluid is being pulled by both the plate and the wall, if that makes any sense, okay? So the wall is trying to make it stay still, and the plate is trying to make it move at two feet per second. So right here along the wall, it's moving at two feet per second, okay? And right here at the plate, it's not moving at all. So on the bottom side, Okay, we're assuming this has a linear profile, which is um, if the fluid is viscous enough, that's a reasonable assumption. Um, so this would be u as a function of z, okay, where z is this direction. So we'll, we'll say this is the x direction and this is the z direction, okay. So du dz, basically what we're looking for is we're try, kind of get, trying to get out what is the slope of this line here. Okay, so du dz... Okay, what we could do is I could derive a um, I could derive an equation for this line and then take the derivative of it. We could do that, um, but there's easier ways in this case because this is just the slope. Oh, that did not is not what I meant to happen. This is just the slope of that line. So what we can do is we can approximate this, and in fact, in this case, it is an exact approximation because it's a line, as the change in u with respect to the change in z. Um, excuse me there. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say delta U over delta Z. So um, you can take the top, you can take the bottom. I'm going to take the bottom because it has an, because it has a positive slope and I just prefer that. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this point right here and this point right here. And we're going to be kind of constructing what is the slope of the line between the bottom and the top. Okay. So at the bottom, okay, the U is zero, zero uh, feet per second, okay? And at the top, it's two feet per second, two feet per second, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing for the Z. At the bottom, the Z is whatever the Z is. We haven't even defined where zero is, so I could, I could move my axis and I could make uh, my bottom down here, but it doesn't really matter. Really what matters is the difference between the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and we, we could put my axis down here if I wanted to, z and x, so that this is zero, so that this is z equals zero, okay? And then I could say, well, the top is at two inches, 
So let's say uh, two out of 12 feet, oh, feet, not inches. Um, so I, I'm just converting that to uh, feet. Okay, minus the bottom, which is at zero feet. Okay, now we could have done the same thing at the at the top as well. Um, you know, uh, but anyway, so if we if we do the math there, we end up with a um, um, velocity uh, is shear of see let's see two divided by two. So this looks like it's going to be twelve per second. Okay, so that's a you know the feet cancel out and we're left with per seconds. Okay, so it's 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 a weird unit. Okay, so that's our du dz. So I go down here, and I can plug both of those in to get tau. So what do we have? 1.5 times 10 to the negative. So this is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative third uh, pounds seconds per foot squared. Okay, and du dz is uh, 12 per second. Okay, and that's how I'm going to get my shear. Okay. So at this point, it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a plug and chug. 1.8 times 10 to the negative two. Now we have to think about units. This per second cancels with that second, and we're with pounds per square foot. Pounds per square foot. Um, note that again, I will give you a number here that you can look up in your textbook. Okay, so that's that's where you're going to find that. Okay, uh, in this case, I just made up an oil, and I couldn't really find a good answer for it. Um, okay. So now we take that and we're going to go over here. Okay, and we're going to plug that right in and we're going to say F equals 2 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 2 PSF times the area, which is 2 feet squared. Okay, so F equals um, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 1 um, pounds. Okay, because pounds per square foot cancels with square foot and we're left with pounds. Okay. Okay, now are we done? We're not done, unfortunately, um, because if we go back here, we have did that part, and now we need to do the power. Okay, so how do we get at power? Okay, so um, power, okay, is work per time. So normally, uh, power, usually work equals uh, work per time, work divided by time, and um, so is force, times distance per time, okay, usually? Okay, because work is force times distance. So another way that uh, this is often thought of is you'll say, well, it's force times velocity, okay? And there's actually some, some you know, there's really some derivative work going on in there, but, um, you know, some uh, product rules and things like that. But, you know, this is one of the ways that this is often done, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna just, you know, this is kind of, uh, this is slapdash or hand wavy. So here's my hand, and it's waving, okay? So this is not a technical derivation, but it will help you remember this formula if ever you need it, okay? So um, force times velocity, okay? And luckily, this is kind of a nice, easy um, thing to do. Um, my force is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 1 pounds, okay? And then my velocity is, what was the velocity? It was up here somewhere. I think it's 2. Yeah, two feet per second, okay? So two feet per second. So whatever's doing that force, or whatever's you know, pulling on this plate, for whatever reason that it wants to pull this plate, is, one point, is doing one point.
Oh, wait. <laughs> you might have spotted it. Um, I made an error, didn't I? Okay, the area was four square feet. And if you go down here, for some reason, I plugged in two. So let's, um, let's fix that real quick. Let's make this four feet squared, which I guess makes that from 7.2. It's going to change that to, what, 1.44 times 10 to the negative 1 pounds. And so if we plug that number in here, okay, then this becomes 2.88 times 10 to the negative 1 foot pounds per second. Okay, my apologies. <laughs> uh, anyway, error, errata. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I guess I'll re-upload this video. All right, bye.